Welcome back, my name is Guy, and this time I'm going to show you how I attach these curved rails to these legs to give me this end rail assembly for my dining table. Stick around. Now that I have these out of the clamps, the first thing I need to do is I need to straighten up or flatten one edge. And I need to do that just like I would any other board. I'm just going to put them against my joyer fence and run them through until I get this perfectly flush on the bottom. So this is what I'm looking for. I've got one edge perfectly perpendicular to the face of this. Um, just like, again, just like any other board. So what I need to do next is you know, do the other one and then I need to cut these to a finished width of three and a half inches. Well, I got the first one done. I should mention that if you feel unsafe doing this, which this is not the, the safest procedure you can do on your table saw, uh, a bandsaw is also a good option for this. Everything is based off the center lines of this template. So I've got the center line here, and I've got the legs here. So I brought down my center line on the actual piece itself. I just need to line that up with this. Now, there was a little bit of spring back that I didn't account for, but that's okay. I just need to line this up. Now that I have it in place, where those joints are going to be, as indicated by the leg pattern on the layout, I can just draw a line here and one on the other side. So now that I've got those marks there, I can just carry them across a little bit so I can see them from the top. And take a straight edge and then just mark a line of where that cut has to take place. I don't know what that angle is. I don't really care. That's the reality of it. So I'm just going to go over to my miter saw, line up my laser on that, and cut these to length. Well, there's the cut. It's perfectly in line with that. And again, I can clean that up a little bit, and I need, probably will need to take a little bit off of there to get these to fit right. I just need to make the other three cuts. Well, I'm getting ready to cut the dominoes and the rails, and I've had to clamp it up a little goofy. I'm going to be using the face of my MFT table, or my outfeed table, as a reference face. This piece is 20 millimeters thick. I know the domino cuts 10 millimeters off from the bottom of the uh, base of it, so I know that's going to be perfectly centered. All this is rigged up to make sure that that face here is perfectly perpendicular to my outfeed table, my reference surface. So now that I've got the marks on here, all I need to do is take my domino, line up those marks, and plunge them in. And I know that that domino will be plunging in at the exact spot I need to on here. So here we go. Okay, those are the holes. And these are going to be 8 by 40 dominoes also. I can go the full 20 millimeters on both the legs and the rails on this. So I just need to flip this around, do this one, and then do the other one, and then I'll work on the legs. I'm getting ready to set up for the joinery for the rails. And uh, these are the curved rails that go between the two legs, bowed towards the inside. So I've got my triangle here again, and these are the fronts. Let me move these away this time. And I'm going to camp these out where the faces are out like that. Okay. Now the rails are going to be going here and here. There is going to be the curved rail, the bent lamination, going between these two sides. And that's what this line with the C means. Uh, C is for curved. So now that I've got those marked out, I need to make sure that when I'm flipping these around and I'm using the domino, that I'm referencing against the right face. So that's what this line with the dot is here. That indicates that that face is going to go down against my table when I reference the shim to reference the domino. Sounds complicated. It really isn't. Once you get this laid out and you visualize it in person, it's actually very easy to get your head around. Well, we cut the domino slots a lot like I cut the, the slots for the rails. 
And uh, in this case, I have to have a piece of shim that's about 22 millimeters. That will give me a 32 millimeters on center here, and that's where the curved leg is going to go. So I've got my reference face down to the, my uh, outfeed table. I've checked all these measurements about 10 times to make sure I'm good. So I just need to reference off my marks here and cut the slots. So here's the first set of domino slots. I just need to do the rest of the legs. This represents a little bit of a different clamping situation, strictly because you don't have a straight face to clamp on here on the ends. And also, this rail is between these angled faces. So if you put pressure on it, these are going to twist in like this, and you're not going to be able to close the gap right here. So this is, this is one of the reasons why you never get rid of your cutoffs. Um, I've got some cutoffs from the ends of the legs, and I've put a 45 degree cut right down the middle of them. And these are going to go on the ends like this. Okay? And when I put a clamp across here, I'll make sure when I clamp these that I put the clamp over the center of the joint on these legs right here. So, got that. I'm just going to slowly clamp them down. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on there, just enough to close the joint. There, that's good. So, this makes sure that these, these legs aren't going to flip open like this. Now I want to check these for square. And they're pretty good. So, the next thing I need to do is I need to clamp in the curved rail. And that represents a totally different situation. So I've got the assembly down here on my table laying flat. It's pretty square. It doesn't have to be perfectly square right now. But I've got the curve rail, which again is going towards the middle of the table here. And I've got the dominoes in the ends. And I'm just going to put this in here. Push it together. Now just like before, I've got those curved, those 45 degree ends on here. And I want to make sure that when I put the clamping pressure on there, I don't twist those legs out of square. Because it's going to be a real bear later on when I try to put the long rails on. So I've got my clamps here just like before. And just like before, I need to just slowly clamp these down just till I close the joint. And this is what's going to happen when I actually glue up the table. I just want to close the joint. I don't want to start messing all this up and taking it out of square. So I've got this assembly back on my bench and all the visible joints that you're going to see on the front and on the back too, the ones you're not going to see, are all closed up real nice and tight. There's no gaps at all. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this leg is still square to the rail. And boy, that came out nice. Uh, but again, this is a dry fit. When I'm using glue, that's going to be probably another situation. But at least I have a clamping a strategy all laid out to do this. Because when I do it, I want to make sure that I can get it done right. Well, that's it for this time. The joinery on this wasn't super complicated, but it's a very exacting process. Uh, the domino really makes this easy to do. Uh, but you still have to be very careful and watch what you're doing, especially on a layout, because it, it's just unconventional the way all this joinery is connecting together. So thanks a lot for watching. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It means a lot to me. And We'll see you next time.